Charleston is a pretty active area as far as the paranormal experiences. Charleston's been around since 1670 and it's had its ups and downs. It had a pretty bloody history getting to the point where it's at. So it does have a lot of ghosts. It has a lot of locations that are haunted in Charleston. I've spent quite a long time here in Charleston uh, being in law enforcement. I was a homicide investigator for many years and after I retired I always had an interest in folklore and legends. Decided to start looking into ghost tales. Well, I wrote a lot of books throughout the states, but after doing the Ghost of the USS Yorktown, that was two years ago, and I haven't left this ship yet. It's pretty active, uh, has a lot of interesting things going on on this ship. You get everything from whispers to footsteps to door slamming, hatches slamming, uh, to all the way up to full body apparitions. People claim to see a lot of things going on on this ship. Shadowy apparitions to full body apparitions. Uh, I've worked here for about 17 years now. Started when I was uh, 13 years old as a volunteer project through school and then fell in love with the place and uh, went to work at age 14 just running papers and now I'm currently an exhibit technician uh, just doing audiovisual uh, interactive entertaining stuff for the kids now. I've, I've heard lots of shadowy figures, uh, I've heard of footsteps, I've heard of uh, people talking, um, me personally, I've, I've had uh, tugs on me, and I've had uh, doors come open on me, and uh, other uh, other noise-related things. I haven't seen much. Uh, one time, saw a shadow cut across a light, but that was, was the most of what I saw. It was back uh, back in my high school days when I would uh, pretty much come out here on Friday and leave on a Sunday morning, spend the whole weekend working uh, and we had uh, state rooms where we would stay and on this particular night I was uh, I was the only one down there uh, I was just sitting on the edge of the bunk just uh, collecting my thoughts I guess and uh, all of a sudden the door burst open and I expected it to be maybe some kids wandering into where they shouldn't have been and I went out to uh, investigate and at uh, either end of the passageway from where I was, there were chains hanging, and the chains were perfectly still. Nobody, it was, it, it, it'd be hard for me to believe that somebody was able to zip under the chain real quick in the time it took for me to get up uh, without making the chain sway at all. Uh, plus, on a steel ship, you can hear footsteps uh, from pretty far away, so for me to have not heard anybody uh, running was uh, a little concerning for me. Um, but outside of that, uh, I, I don't know really what to make of it. I had the door pinned shut, so it uh, it was it, it was it was definitely some force behind it. About two years ago, we had a, uh, a couple visiting from Wisconsin, and they they took a picture of this helicopter. And uh, after looking at their digital camera here on board the ship, they brought it to a crew member of ours to take a look at what they what was appeared to be a a, a human form in the back of the helicopter, and it does appear to be. Uh, a crew member, which would have been a flight engineer with a helmet, May West jacket, uh, uniform, uh, standing in the back of the helicopter, uh, which is, we've tried to duplicate that shot many, many times to no avail. So it's one of the more, one of those unexplained stories of the USS Yorktown and its crew. On January 23rd of 2013 on this aircraft carrier, we were hosting an investigation. About 2.30 in the morning, we get up onto the hangar deck. And as we're walking through the hangar deck, two of the young ladies point in the residual lighting towards the drink machines to a person who's walking down there, and they ask, who is that? I said, it's one of the security officers. The mom replies that it's neither of the security officers I saw tonight, and uh, it definitely was neither of those two security officers. It was a young white male walking past the drink machines wearing a black coat and had a black hat on. Well, I notice something they don't notice, and what I notice is he does not have security and reflective letters on the back of his jacket. He's not a security officer. After 20 years of law enforcement, my brain automatically defaults to cop mode, and I realize we've got a trespasser on the ship. So I begin calling to him. He does not acknowledge. So at this point, I have a walkie-talkie. I want to get to him before he gets down below deck, contact security or law enforcement, and get him out of here. So I start running across the hangar deck towards the individual. I get to about 20 feet of him. He turns left towards the stairwell, and what I'm not anticipating is the fact that the other part of my brain says, look at the pretty round buttons on that U.S. Navy military peacoat. 
realize he's wearing a pea coat. He has a hat on with some sort of writing across the crown of the hat. I start downshifting rather rapidly. He makes a step towards the stairs and there is no longer anything there in front of me. 20 years of law enforcement, I've had a lot of things happen in that situation running up onto a suspect. But that's the first time in my whole 50 years of existence I've ever had a person vaporize. That was a new one on me. Took a little bit of getting used to. Where we are currently is uh, we're, we're up forward on the uh, fourth deck uh, near a uh, Marines landing uh, force equipment room where I was up here and actually was able to get to the center of this room and felt a tug on my radio. I had a, a, a boom on my a boom mic on my radio and I actually felt it pull tight and that's nothing out of the ordinary. It catches on things all the time and I stopped to see what it was hung on and by that time it had already snapped on me and I was clear in the middle of the room and the the, uh, the cord on the mic didn't reach to anything that I was standing near. It was a couple of feet shy of anything that it could have snagged on. We had uh, our current chief of police for the town of Mount Pleasant, who was a lieutenant at the time, had a very interesting experience when he was called on board because uh, our security guards thought they had a prowler on the ship. And uh, he and a sergeant at that time saw a large black, black mass uh, that uh, ran from them at a very rapid rate faster than they said they could move and it was very large black mass and it happened in the same area where on the program ghost hunters they picked up an image on a video a, a thermal uh, camera uh, video in the same location so you know that was pretty interesting compelling evidence uh, we've had a lot of supports of seeing what, what's called the shadow man so it kind of fits with that as well we've had uh, certainly lots of reports of, of, of noises but of course this ship makes a lot of noise when it's uh, contracting and expanding because of heat differentials, but uh, uh, that sort of thing. We had a report of a lady in a, a birthing area where the campers stay that uh, her towel rose to the ceiling or the overhead of the, of the compartment and came back down and excited her a great deal. But the, the main thing is if, if, there are, if there are ghosts, period, and if there are ghosts on this ship, there are guys, you know, and uh, it's uh, again very comforting, I think, to have them here. If there's such a thing as a ghost on this aircraft here, it's a hero, it's a patriot, it's an American who died for the freedoms of this country, and died for all of our freedoms. So these are the good guys on here. There's nothing on this ship that's going to hurt you. They were our greatest generation. They, they, uh, they certainly uh, did plenty for us uh, back when the ship was operational in World War II. And it is uh, very important that we don't forget about where we came from. And part of doing that is preserving uh, ships of, these na of this nature that uh, carried so many good Americans over to a fight and so many of them lost their lives doing it and so it's just right that we honor them this way.